Well, tonight we want to continue in a, a study, a series that we've been involved with now for a few weeks called Songs of the Saved. As most of you know, if you've been with us in those weeks, uh, this is a, a study in which we're kind of digging into more familiar psalms to us uh, in the Psalter. And tonight, I, I think, falls into that category as well. We're actually going to take a look at two psalms, uh, Psalms 42 and 43. But uh, as we listen to them in just a moment, we're going to hear a theme that kind of resonates throughout. Certainly, we're going to hear a, a common refrain uh, that happens throughout. And we might wonder, well, why are these two psalms? Why isn't this just one psalm? Well, initially, I'll tell you that some of the reason for that goes back to, uh, to the Septuagint. The Septuagint is a, a Greek uh, translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. It goes back to the third century B.C. And as commentators tell us that their best guess is why this uh, assumedly one psalm was split into two psalms is because it was used for some kind of liturgical purposes. Uh, in other words, purposes in worship. Uh, no one really knows for sure. Uh, but it sure seems like this, uh, originally at least, was one psalm. And so that's how we want to approach it tonight. So I'm going to read both of these. And if you want to follow along uh, with me as I do, uh, you'll find uh, these psalms in your pew Bibles, starting on page 554. Uh, page 554 in your pew Bibles there. And again, just going to read uh, Psalms 42 and Psalm 43. As I do, listen to those those themes, those common themes that come up, and certainly the, uh, the repeating refrain will come out as well. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love. And at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. So as far as we want to read in God's word tonight, and may he bless his word to us. Well, congregation, one thing that really makes the book of Psalms so appealing to us, I think, is the honesty that we find expressed within the various psalms that we find in the Psalter. I mean, really, the psalmists, uh, they don't sugarcoat anything, right? I mean, if they're happy, we know it. If they're upset, we know it. If, if they're miserable, we know it. If they're confused, we know it. 
In other words, the psalmists really don't try to hide their emotions. In fact, just the opposite, really. They really tend to wear their emotions on their sleeves. And this really is a wonderful aspect of the book of Psalms, and it really is a wonderful gift that God has given to us. Because what it means, it's, it's permission for us. It's permission for you and for me to really uh, express our emotions when it comes to the range of emotions that we experience as human beings. And when it comes to that range of human emotions, one emotion that we do struggle with from time to time is feeling down in the dumps. I mean, all of us kind of feel that way from time to time. Some simply call it sadness. Some might label it depression. Others might call it feeling gloomy. But whatever we call it, I think it's safe to say that we all know what that feels like. It feels like a dark cloud is just kind of settled around us. We just feel down. And then to, to complicate it, perhaps even to make matters worse, we, we feel guilty about that because we don't think that we're supposed to feel that way as believers. In fact, as Reverend Howard Vanderwell once put it, he said, one of the most persistent flaws in the way people understand the Christian faith is that they assume we should always be on top of things if we trust Jesus. It's like saying that if we love the Lord and if God is good, then the sun will always be shining. But then we run smack dab into Psalms 42 and 43. And it's very clear that even if we love the Lord and even though God is good, the sun isn't always shining. That sometimes we just feel down in the dumps. To use the, the language of the psalmist, we feel downcast in our soul. Well, why is that? Why is that? What is it that makes us feel that way? And, and an equally important question, is there a way out of that? Well, the psalmist in Psalms 42 and 43 answers both of those questions for us. So let's take a look, first of all, at some of the reasons why we occasionally have this feeling of being downcast in our soul. And really, as we peruse Psalm 42 and 43, it seems as though the author offers us here at least three reasons why. Three reasons that, that occasionally we feel this way. Occasionally we feel downcast in our soul. We have this spiritual struggle going on within us. And the very first reason he offers is it has to do with feeling far from God. And I think that's a feeling that is almost universal for us, that we all have had that sense that we just don't feel close to God. And really, the psalmist voices that feeling in the opening verses, right off the bat in, of Psalm 42, when he says, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? And the sense in these verses that the psalmist feels that he is far from God, that, that he deeply desires to be with God, he, he wants to be with God, but he just doesn't feel close to God. He feels as though God is far away. Now, in the psalmist's case, that feeling is probably rooted in his physical location, it seems pretty clear just from the psalm itself that, that the psalmist isn't anywhere near Jerusalem and therefore he's not close at all to the temple. And even though he knows that God is everywhere, yet because he's far away from his home, he feels far away from God. We might even say he feels alienated from God. And again, I think that's a, a feeling that we can identify with. I mean, we know that feeling. We know how it feels to feel like we're far from God. Even when spiritually speaking, we're, we're not far from Him. In fact, we're never far from Him, right? Given his, his omnipresence. And yet at times we feel that way. We feel alienated from God. We feel like, like our prayers don't go past the ceiling. You've ever said that of yourself in your own prayers? I just feel that way. My, my prayers aren't going past the ceiling. Or we come to worship and we feel that it's cold and it's methodical. Or we try and engage God's word and we just feel that it's much more of a chore than it is a delight. And we want God. We thirst for him but we just can't seem to enter into his presence. God seems far away. And that makes us feel downcast in our soul. 
Now, the second reason the psalmist highlights why we might occasionally feel this way, feel downcast in our soul, is that at times we even feel abandoned by God, maybe even forgotten by Him. And again, the psalmist voices this feeling in various places throughout the psalm. Uh, for instance, in verse 3, it says, My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? And then again in verse 9, where he exclaims, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. They say to me all day long, where is your God? And the sense in these verses is that the psalmist feels as though God has, has abandoned him, maybe even forgotten him altogether. And that particularly in the context of his enemies. Right, those who have hauled him away from his homeland. Right, those who know the psalmist's confession and yet seeing his condition. They say, where is your God? No, here you are. You, you claim to be one of God's precious children. But, but look at you. Look at your situation. You're, you're a captive in a foreign land. God doesn't really care about you. He's abandoned you. He's forgotten all about you. Now, granted, you and I have probably never been physically held captive by our enemies. And yet I would imagine that there have been times when some of us have felt the pokes and the jabs of, of unbelievers. In that time when we're going through a difficult period, as if they're saying, where is your God? You know, here you claim to be a Christian. You, you claim to be a, a follower of Christ. But look at your life. Things are falling apart. Here, look, your, your kid is a drug addict. Your husband is battling cancer. You yourself are on the verge of losing your job. God doesn't care about you. He's abandoned you. He's forgotten all about you. And in those times, how easy it is to actually feel like that's true. How easy it is to feel as though God has abandoned you. How easy it is to feel as though God has forgotten about you. And again, that may very well make us feel like the psalmist is expressing downcast in our soul. Then the third reason why we might occasionally feel downcast in our soul has to do with actually feeling rejected by God. By this feeling that God has in fact turned his back on you altogether, you know, regardless of your cries for help. By the psalmist voices this in verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 43. It says, Vindicate me, O God. Defend my cause against ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Uh, it seems in this psalm that the, the psalmist, even despite his feelings of, of alienation and abandonment, nevertheless, he's cried out to God. He's, he's asked God to vindicate his cause. But at least in his estimation, God hasn't answered his cries for help. And thus the psalmist feels like God's rejected him. You ever felt that way? You ever felt that God has, has turned his back on you? Perhaps you have. Maybe it was a prayer that, in your estimation, went unanswered. It, it was a good prayer. Maybe a prayer for healing for a, a loved one. But at least how we perceive things, God didn't answer that prayer. And we felt rejected by him. All of these things can make us feel downcast in our soul. Now, feeling far from God, feeling abandoned by him, even forgotten by him. You know, feeling as though he's rejected us. See, these are the feelings that the psalmist expresses in the context of this psalm. 
And they're very real feelings. They're real feelings for the psalmist and they're real feelings for you and for me. We can understand it. We can identify with what the psalmist is expressing. So is there any way out of these feelings? Is there any cure, we might say, for these spiritual struggles that we encounter from time to time in our lives? And happily, the answer is yes. There is a way to restoration in our soul. In fact, the psalmist really hints at it throughout the course of what we read together. Throughout Psalms 42 and 43, the psalmist is is hinting at this as he goes. So for instance, he says things like this in verse 4. These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Or in verse 8, it says, By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Or even in verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 43, to send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. And finally, of course, the psalmist declares it most clearly in that threefold refrain. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why in such turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I will again praise him, my salvation and my God. What's the remedy? What's the answer that the psalmist presents us with? It has everything to do with hope and praise. Hoping in our God and offering our praises to Him. And you and I know very well what Christian hope is all about. That it's not a a cross your fingers, wishful thinking kind of thing, but it is a firm expectation and it is grounded in God's faithfulness and in the knowledge and conviction that no matter what, my future is secure. One person put it this way. He said, Christian hope, it's not, well, wouldn't it be nice if? And it's not, well, maybe one day things will work out. No, this hope is real. It's a this changes everything confidence. Hope like this flows only from Christ, our gracious, loving Savior, and it brings joy, indescribable, irrepressible, indestructible joy and praise. As commentator Warren Wearsby put it, praising is the best medicine for a broken heart. These spiritual struggles we've been talking about, they're real. I know that. You know that. Even Jesus knows that. I mean, after all, Jesus went through quite a struggle of his own. If you remember, while Jesus hung on the cross, he uttered some words there from a psalm that is very much akin to Psalms 42 and 43 from Psalm 22. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those are words that echo very clearly the alienation and the abandonment and the rejection that you and I feel from time to time. But you know, as commentators tell us, that as Jesus uttered those words, that no doubt he had the entire psalm in mind, all of Psalm 22. 
And that's a psalm that just like Psalms 42 and 43, ultimately declares hope in a faithful God. And it ends in a call to praise. So when spiritual struggles come our way, may we, with the Spirit's help, be able to find our way on the path to hope and to praise. And to be able to say with great conviction, right along with this psalmist, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so full of turmoil within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet again praise him. My salvation and my God. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we are grateful for Psalms 42 and 43. They speak to some of the emotions that we often don't care to speak about. That often we like to pretend that they're not there, that they're not real. But they are when we're honest with ourselves. Many times we feel just like the psalmist did. We feel alienated from you. Sometimes we feel abandoned by you. Sometimes even rejected by you. God, this is just part of of the journey of faith. Even as it was for the psalmist, it is for us. And yet too, as you tell us in the context of this this wonderful psalm, that there is a way out. And it is, by the way, of hope and praise to hope in you, to hope in your faithfulness and to praise you with all that we are. So God, we ask that that the next time we sense this spiritual struggle coming into our life, that we'll remember the psalmist in Psalms 42 and 43. And that we'll be able to say right along with him, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why in such turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.